Today, um, I want to talk to Lawrence Ray, BitRefill's ambassador for the UK. Um, Lawrence, Hello. thank you for joining me. No How worries. are you doing thanks today? For, uh, thanks for organizing this. I'm, I'm good, thank you. Um, yeah, life is good in, uh, in rainy England. Uh, how about you? Oh, I'm doing fantastic. Um, Lawrence, the reason I'm having you on today is because I wanted to interview you about living on crypto in the UK. Um, seeing as you're a UK Bitcoiner, I was hoping to get your perspective on things. Um, my first yeah, question absolutely. is what's the most popular way for Bitcoiners to acquire um, Bitcoin or other cryptocurrency within the UK? Um, is it mining, trading, earning it? Yeah, I'd say um, in the UK, it's, it's got to be trading. Um, I mean, mining generally isn't as popular here as it once was back in the earlier days for, for people into crypto. Um, I think a lot of people use like the bigger exchanges, the, the Binance, Coinbase and things like that. Um, but there's a lot of local UK exchanges too that, that people do use. Um, when it comes to earning in cryptocurrency, I think there's less of that in the UK than there would be in some other countries. Um, just simply... Um, because, for example, in, in countries where the currency is, is sort of performing badly against Bitcoin, it's actually a benefit for you to get paid in Bitcoin, right, um, from, from international companies. Um, whereas there's less of that here in the UK. So, yeah, I think trading is probably the, the key source uh, and buying from exchanges. <clears throat> okay. Um, what, what would you say is the most popular exchange in the UK? Like, which, what's the one that everybody turns to? Hard to say, probably Binance or Coinbase seem to be the two uh, most popular. And obviously they're international. Yeah. Um, but I'd say they're probably the most popular. Okay. Um, what is the easiest and fastest way to turn your Bitcoin into um, pounds, into cash? Yeah. Um, again, with that, it's probably going straight to an exchange uh, or brokerage like like your Binance and your Coinbase and your CEX and things like that. So um yeah, it's generally quite simple now. Um, go back to you know when I was first involved in crypto, and it was not easy uh, in it by any means. But um, now it's quite easy. Like you're going straight to these exchanges, um, and it's pretty much just you know BTC, GBP, Pair, Go, and that's it kind of thing. Um, and fees wise, the fees seem to vary from different exchanges. Um, it's not horrendous uh, by any means um and the spread is generally sort of one percent so like the difference between the buy price and the sell price is, is just under one percent usually on on finance for example um so it's not the worst but obviously if you're not wanting to sort of, sort of get that money into cash and so you can spend the cash probably better off just staying in a stable coin um and you're just sort of trading do, do you personally use binance or, or coinbase more uh, that's a good, well, I used to use Binance a hell of a lot more, but um, I had some bad customer service uh, issues with them. Uh, and so I just use Coinbase now, despite the higher fees. Um, probably out of laziness, to be honest with you, um, rather than shopping about and using some more local exchanges. Um, I think the next time I go to buy a bigger sum of, of cryptocurrency, then I'll, I'll probably actually look around to see if I can get an uh, you know, account somewhere else. How common is it for a UK business to accept either Bitcoin or another crypto? Um, is that something you see or is it kind of rare? It's pretty rare um, to the point where, I mean, if you, if you speak to the guy on the street about Bitcoin, you know, to them, it's magic internet money, right? Um, there's some places that do accept it, right? But um, it's more of a niche. Um, one company that does, that's quite like a, high street kind of, you know, out there company that's well known by everyone. There's a company called Lush Cosmetics in the UK. They accept it online um, using BitPay. Um, and there's other online retailers, right? Like Microsoft Store, I think does and, and things like that. But, um, but actually that's probably where BitRefill comes in and most in handy uh, because if you've got Bitcoin, most places don't accept cryptocurrency realistically. And, and a lot of people would never heard of it behind the, the counter. So getting your crypto into a gift card to then spend eliminates so many problems, even with the companies that claim to accept crypto like Bitcoin. With the places in the UK that do accept crypto, do they typically also accept Lightning or is it mostly just on chain? Uh, it's mostly on chain um, or yeah, using sort of other companies that will allow them to get the crypto uh, into, into pounds for, for their purpose. I mean, like the coin payments, the bit pay. Um, not many will accept straight up Bitcoin to their own like private wallet. Um, yeah, Lightning Network, um, not not that I've really come across. Um, again, another benefit of BitRefill, to be fair. 
Um, is Lightning popular among UK Bitcoin users? Like, as far as you know, like in the community, like, do you hear people using Lightning wallets and, and making Lightning transactions? Yeah, yeah, I, I, you do. Um, I'd say I'd say there's a big difference between just the cryptocurrency community as a whole in the UK and then sort of the cryptocurrency enthusiasts, right? So there's obviously the people who are interested in you know owning bitcoin and, and other crypto coins and um, just for the profit side of things and then there's the people who seem to be much more interested in actually okay can i can i live on this uh how is this going to help me out etc and so for those people the enthusiasts lightning yeah there's enough buzz about it and there's enough lessons about it out there um and i think people do talk about it and use it but um for the general community of just people into crypto uh it's a lot less heard about and a lot less known about I, I'd, I'd say um than, than bitcoin on chain Okay. Um, what about altcoins? Are, do they have a lot of traction in the UK uh, cryptocurrency communities or are they kind of shunned in favor of Bitcoin? No, yeah, they, they do. Um, you obviously get the, you know, you get the, the standard um, people who are sort of Bitcoin purists. Um, but uh, yeah, the altcoins definitely have actually a, a lot more traction here than, than other countries I've visited. Um, so obviously uh, I spent a fair bit of time in Brazil um, and the, the, obviously, the old coins are used there, but it's much less popular, like significantly less popular to, to use old coins or purchase old coins or even have them available to purchase um, than it is in the UK. Uh, you know, people are very much into Uniswap and, uh, you know, buying coins that are lesser heard of and, and, and Ethereum, XRP, Chainlink, they're, they're all very popular um, uh, on sort of talking groups and also in, in purchase volume. What are the most useful bit refill gift cards for Bitcoiners located in the UK? Yeah, I mean, I'd say when it comes to use, um, I guess the most popular is always a sign, right? And the most popular cards generally seem to be things like Amazon, ASOS, H&M. Um, so brands that are like internationally known or used, like used internationally, but also are in the UK. Um, but I'd say the most useful in a sense of for someone who's really trying to, to use cryptocurrency for everything right in their everyday life things like the sainsbury's and asda gift cards so their supermarket gift cards um and things like just eat uber eats uber you know those are sort of kind of core situations right you, you need to travel to different places you need to get to work you need to go see a friend you need to eat um so those are things that are slightly more essential than things like amazon and asos because obviously often you're getting more kind of products that are just a benefit to you uh, through those services what is the uh, Bitcoin community like in the UK? Is it, is it a pretty huge community or is it still kind of a fringe um, scene? Yeah, I think um, being someone who's kind of inside of the cryptocurrency world, you, there is always that bit of echo chamber where you, you, know, you feel like everyone on the planet <laughs> it, you know, knows everything about crypto, but it's not the case. Um, it still is a fringe community, I think, but, um, but it's growing and, and it's bigger than, than other countries, um, a, a lot of other countries, I think um there's there's a good amount of education on it i think covid has kind of impacted the community a fair bit because there's a lot of these smaller medium-sized meetup groups like there's the crypto curry club in in the uk where people um sort of within the industry or and fans of the industry kind of meet up uh, monthly for meals and things around the big cities so there's those communities that kind of have these kind of 1000 to 2000 member kind of sizes um and then there's also these facebook groups um well, you've got quite heavy UK membership. There's not really any, many exclusive UK groups, but there's many of these ones with UK members over 100K uh, members. So, yeah, I'd say it's a fairly, fairly, fairly strong community considering, you know, crypto's history uh, as, as uh, being a sort of fringe or new emerging technology. Where do you see Bitcoin in five years in the UK? Yeah, that's always a, a tough question. <laughs> um, I think that... <laughs> over the it's always a bit so you know we're, we're, we're looking at the magic ball but i think over the next five years um especially in five years time it's quite realistic to expect that bitcoin will have established itself quite well as like a store of value um for quite a few people um it's it's inflation resistant um it's decentralized and it doesn't rely on things like the uk government for its value right and i think more and more people especially with the, the printing of more and more money during COVID, are beginning to understand that. So I think that it, it, it's definitely going to grow uh, in a sense of people storing their, their wealth there. It's used for day-to-day -day transactions. It might increase a little bit, but I 
doubt it's really, you know, on-chain Bitcoin transactions are really going to increase that much for, for everyday living, um, especially when there's things like the, the digital pound project that, that, that's being whispered about and, and the, uh, the digital euro that's uh, been, been sort of talked about as well. Um, so, yeah, I think it's going to become a lot more popular, but I think that people will either go to Lightning if Lightning can continue to develop and get more popular, or they'll go to, to altcoins that will be more useful for these day-to-day -day transactions. You just mentioned uh, central bank digital currencies. Um, how likely do you think that a uh, crypto pound is going to be? And how, how likely do you see that uh, the UK crypto community will embrace a uh, cryptocurrency version of the pound? Uh, yeah, I mean, I think when it comes to a digital pound, um, I think the, the best answer to that question is that um, it should be a high priority for the UK government and for the, the Bank of England. Uh, it should be a very, very high priority because um, as things are getting more digital, uh, there's, a, there's a chance for a country to really kind of lead when it comes to open banking and, 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 and creating their own CBDC. Um, so I think the digital pound should be a massive priority. And if, if the UK is smart, they will really get, get that to life as quick as they can to get a competitive push over to people like the US and the EU, because especially with Brexit coming, if they can really come to the forefront of, of having a, a central bank digital currency, then it, they're really going to, you know, make a good impression in the international market and, and, and have a stronger way to negotiate for future deals, um, trade deals with, with other countries. Um, I think that the community there's always going to be people who aren't happy with, with the idea, right? Because it's, it's a centralized currency. It's not the dream that Satoshi Nakamoto had. Um, and there's always a part of me that will kind of hate the idea of a CBDC. But at the end of the day, um, I think the overall country will actually accept it a lot better than the, the crypto fanatics and purists will, um, because everyone here is used to not touching money most of the time. I mean, um, the banking system is very quick, advanced. You can make transfers on the weekend. It takes five minutes to a friend. You can make unlimited transfers. It doesn't cost you anything. Uh, you know, so I think a lot of people used to just, I get paid by my company. Uh, you know, it takes five minutes. I just go out, tap a card, buy my shopping, and no one touches the money. So they're used to that digital currency anyway. Uh, so yeah, sorry for the long answer, but uh, there's a few elements to that. No, that, I like that answer. That was a great answer. Um, how easy would you say it is to live on crypto in the UK? Like, is it doable or are you going to have to convert uh, your Bitcoin into, into pounds at some point? I think that it's, it's doable is the answer. Yes. Easy. Not that easy yet. Um, it's getting easier again within even one year, but you know, within two years, it's a staggering difference of how easy it can be. Uh, obviously companies right, like BitRefill, uh, huge help because it suddenly opens your world up to so many situations where you, you want to get food, you want to get clothing, you want to get a lift, you want to, you know, there's so many things you can do. You want to buy a game, you can do that with BitRefill. And that's, that is living on crypto at the end of the day. Um, and things like these crypto credit cards that are starting to appear uh, in the country and are sort of being rumored from Binance and other people like that, um, they're definitely helping massively um, with, with being able to live on cryptocurrency. Um, and it's to the point where next year I'm hoping hoping is the key word, to be able to um, sort of transition to living about 95% on cryptocurrency. There's obviously always going to be the odd thing where it may not work out, but, um, but majority with cryptocurrency uh, myself. Wow. Okay. That, that's pretty inspirational. Um, is, is there anything that I haven't asked you that you think is important for people to know about uh, living on crypto in the UK? I think, I guess... Um, Nothing specific, but I think the, the most important thing for anyone in the UK or any, anyone globally, really, who's watching this uh, to gain from, from this is that there is such a benefit to Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies um, with real-time use cases anyway. There's such a big benefit to, uh, to, to many people with this. I mean, it's not like, I think a lot of people shy away due to scams and, and bad press uh, about Bitcoin, but actually... The benefit here is if you're someone from the UK uh, or living in the UK who has family abroad or you travel abroad, you have friends abroad, uh, or you're even you know, buying things from abroad, using cryptocurrency to sort of transfer, you know, whether you're transferring uh, Bitcoin or, or any other cryptocurrency to someone, it's a hell of a lot easier than going through the standard sort of international money transfer issues and, and the fees that you incur with that. Um, so it's cheaper and it's easier to use Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies. 
Um, so I think the benefit that people will see from transferring to living mainly on crypto is actually huge, especially for someone who travels a lot. Um, it's even bigger. Um, it will actually make your life easier, believe it or not, than it will do just living on, on the pound. Um, and I think another reason to try and live on crypto more, um, something that I haven't really touched on much is a huge thing here is, for example, Brexit, right? Like we're leaving the European Union. Um, and after that announcement, the value of the pound just tanked uh, hugely. And if you'd had all of your wealth in Bitcoin, uh, you know, the, the day before that the value dropped so, so harshly, uh, you could have then a week later uh, sold your Bitcoin back into pounds and made yourself a hell of a lot of money, right? What I'm getting at here is that Bitcoin is generally inflation resistant. And whilst Bitcoin appears to be going up over time, over a rule in value, the pound generally doesn't seem to be doing so. Uh, and it may get even worse after, after the end of this year. So um, yeah, I think, uh, I think people really should, should open, their, open their minds a little bit uh, and do, do their own research uh, on cryptocurrency and how it actually may make their life a lot easier. Um, awesome. That'd be my closing ode. Perfect. Um, Lawrence, thank you very much for uh, doing the interview and answering my questions. No, thanks. It was, uh, it was great, to, great to chat to you and uh, appreciate uh, you taking the time to, to, to video me and, um, yeah, and, and go through all these uh, different queries that you had.